Hello everyone, this is Wednesday the 3rd of February, our English lesson for today, and we're moving on to a slightly shorter unit this week, and I will explain all about that in a moment, but first we have our spelling. So, how many um, O-U-G-H words can you think of? I'm going to give you two minutes, you can time yourselves, um, how many different O-U-G-H words can you think of? Remember, it can make that off sound. It can make that or sound. The ow sound, the uff sound, and the oo sound. There's all sorts of different words for the O-U-G-H letter string. So give yourself two minutes, pause the video now, and write down as many as you can think of. Go! Okay, hopefully you've all done that now. Um, here are a few that I have got, um, I've revealed under here. Let me make this a bit smaller. So we've got uh, though, although, this is that O sound, singular O. Um, we've got dough, donut, and then we've got that off sound, cough, trough. And then we've got the uff sound, rough, tough. And enough, and the owl sound for plow and drought, and the um, the oo sound for bought. No, the or sound. Sorry, bought, thought, thought, and ought. And then we've got the o sound for borough and thorough. Okay, so hopefully you got some of those words um, in your list. Now, have a little look at this. Can you fill in the missing gaps to complete the crossword? So you've got some letters that have been revealed, some that have not. So you're filling in the missing gaps. Where are they going to go um, in this crossword? So again, pause the video now. Give yourself five minutes and have a really good look at this. Can you fill in the gaps and fill in this crossword? Off you go. OK, I'm going to reveal the answers to you now. There we are. There is our completed crossword. So if you pause the screen, then you can have a see if you've got those words. OK. So for the, uh, for the last, second half of this week, we are going to be thinking about using descriptive language. OK, and we are going to be creating an opening for a story. Now, we're not going to write the whole story. We're just going to be thinking about writing our opening. So we have been reading Who Let the Gods Out during uh, in class if you're in school and at the end of the day on our Zoom calls. And over the next few days, we're going to write an opening for this story. And we're going to imagine that the story actually begins when Virgo crash lands into Elliot's barn. So we're going to have this setting, amazing setting description at the beginning of the barn in the field um, and Elliot's house in the distance. Then we're going to have a go at building a bit of suspense when Elliot's in the barn and Virgo's in the barn and they don't know who either of them are. And then we are going to um, be writing that as our opening. OK, but today we are going to be thinking purely about setting. OK, so let's have a look at some of these images. Now, you might want to have a little research of some of your own images. I just typed into Google um, barns at night. So these were some kind of cool images I thought would, would give us some really good descriptive language and give us a bit of help with that. So we've got this one here at the top, this barn. It's almost like that's um, Elliot's house with the barn attached to it isn't it? And you can see some of the stars in the night sky. You always get really clear evenings and clear night skies when you're out in the countryside. So that's kind of what it's looking like there. And then we've got down here sort of a fallen down barn um, and loads of lovely stars, almost like this little water waterfall of stars falling down from the other one. So first things first, what I would like you to do is think of the nouns. What can you see? What can you hear? And what can you smell? You might not be able to smell anything, 
Um, but what could you imagine that you can hear and what you can see? OK, so pause the video now. Give yourself two minutes to write down any words, any nouns of things that you can see. So it could be uh, barn, stars, darkness, grass, um, twigs, anything. OK, pause the video now and have a go at that, please. OK, so you may have got some of these words. I've written mine around my picture here. Um, so we were just looking at the nouns in that first bit. I've written the darkness. It doesn't look awfully dark in this picture, but it would be quite dark if you were on your own in this field. Just those stars are really, really bright in this picture. Um, I've got stars. I've got the lights from the house. Um, wood. Owls hooting. I thought I was thinking of what sounds can I hear. Uh, we've got trees, bushes, grass, moon, the sky and a field. You can obviously always put in any extra things that you that aren't necessarily in the picture that you could imagine might be by this barn. OK. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn some of these nouns into expanded noun phrases. So we're going to add in some adjectives to create a bit more description. OK, I'm going to show you what I mean. So here, where my main noun is, I have just put in some descriptive words, anything I could think of at the time that would best describe it um, next to my main noun. So I've got the bright piercing stars rather than just the stars, the gentle glow of the lights from the house obsidian darkness that's suggesting a really dark black darkness it's not massively in this picture but my description i might want it to look a bit darker than that uh, the damp rotting wood the sound of owls hooting damp thick grass an imposing porcelain moon and we've got the vast sky a large expanse of field so i've just added in a couple of adjectives um, some verbs as well to make this um, my EMPs come alive. We're expanding those nouns, aren't we? We're making it a bit more interesting. So pause the video now. I would like you to do exactly the same thing for your nouns. OK, so give yourself maybe five minutes and have a go at that, please. Off you go. OK. So you might have guessed what we're going to do next. We are going to be turning these descriptions and some of them, not all of them, into figurative language. Now, as with these EMPs, you might not use all of these in your description and that's fine. We just need to get as many ideas as we can so that you can go, oh, I like that one. That one works well and you can pick and choose from them. OK. So we're going to have a little look at figurative language. Now, when we're talking about figurative language and you've heard me say this a lot because we do look at this a lot, it's really good way of making your writing nice and descriptive. We've got similes. You're saying something is something else, um, is like something else, sorry. Then we've got metaphors. You're saying something is something else. Um, and then we've got personification where you are giving your object human qualities so for example here um we've got what have we got uh the even the moon had turned its silvery eye towards the towards the scene now that's personification because it hasn't got a silvery eye but it's also a metaphor isn't it because you're saying that it's got this silvery eye okay um so let's have a look at some of these examples now again I didn't do an example of figurative language for every noun that I had. I just chose five of those two, four, no, six, five or six examples just to have a play around with, to have a go at. OK, so for the stars, I sort of up leveled that and turned it into a cascade of stars spilled down from the sky like a fountain of jewels. So a nice simile in there. We've got a gentle beacon of hope in the distance about the lights from the house. Uh, we've got the lonely, quavering call of an owl swept through the night air. We've got the grass down here. 
Let's make sure we can see that. The dew on the wet grass jealously held the reflection of the stars. So it's holding that reflection. It's a bit jealous of their brightness and how pretty they're looking in the sky. Then we've got, we've read about the moon. And then the barn itself, I've kind of turned to this metaphor of a skeleton. The hollow timber skeleton let the chill night air sweep through its bones. Okay, so pause the video, have a go, come up, if five is too much, come up with maybe two or three examples of figurative language that you might include in your description. Off you go. OK, hopefully you've got some of those really good ideas down. Now, the last thing we need to do is put all this together into a descriptive paragraph. So I have done an example for you on this page. I've also put on the side some fronted adverbials. Um, you might be able to think of some of your own fronted adverbials that link your sentences together. So it makes your paragraph flow nicely. OK, um, I'm going to read out my example and then I'm going to go through uh, where we've included some of the success criteria. OK, it was dark, that kind of gentle darkness that you only get in the countryside. Among this darkness, a cascade of stars spilled down from the sky like a fountain of jewels, each tiny shining speck warming the night around it. In the middle of the field stood a barn. Its hollow timber skeleton let the chill night air breathe through its bones. The lonely quavering call of an owl swept through the barn, warning the creatures in a nearby forest. Even the moon had turned its silvery eye towards the scene. OK, so let's have a look at some of the things we've got in here. We have got Let's do our front adverbials, our linking phrases first. We've got among the darkness. We've got, where's my other one? Mm -hmm. In the middle of the field, there we go. We've then got lots of um, ENPs, gentle darkness. We've got um, hollow timber skeleton. Lonely quavering call. We've got um, silvery eye. And then, of course, amongst all of that as well, we have got um, our figurative language. The cascade of stars spilling from the sky like a fountain of jewels. Nice simile there. Um, a tiny shining speck warming the night around it. We've got... Um, the moon turning its silvery eye. So again, lots of these things merge into one another, don't they? Often when you're using figurative language, you're also going to include some ENPs in it as well, which is great. OK, so if you are year five, I would like you to write at least a paragraph. So that's as much as I've written here. And that should take you give yourself maybe 15 to 20 minutes for that. If you're year six, I would like to see two decent paragraphs, please. Um, and again, that should take you maybe 20, 25 minutes. OK, so give yourself plenty of time. Have a play around with it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading these. Do make sure that you send them in on Dojo. Good luck. <laughs>